How's everybody doing? My name is Sammy Ramirez, and I play viola. So I wouldn't consider myself an expert, right, or anything like that. I'm just here. I'm a guy that loves to play instruments and collect them. I've been playing vihuela for a long time. I've come across a whole lot of them. If you know anything about vihuelas, you pretty much know about Morales instruments. Now, you probably know about Roberto Morales or Ruben Morales. He actually made a lot of these instruments that I'm going to play for you guys today. Today, I kind of just want to make like a, I guess you could say a comparison video. Comparison? I, I'm comparing I'm comparing the instruments that I have. Currently have six vihuelas that are all either Ruben Morales or Roberto Morales. I know me when I was coming up and I was young. I didn't know much about them but the name. I have owned a lot of different vihuelas and I kind of just want to talk about them a little bit. Talk about the ones we have today which you'll be able to see in a little bit. So I want to go with the oldest one that I have at the moment. Let's start with this one right here. This vihuela is a Roberto Morales and this one is from the year I'm gonna guesstimate is that a word guesstimate I'm gonna estimate that this one is from the late 70s or early 80s and I'm going off of the construction the kind of stuff that you see on this instrument and also you know kind of on the tag the tag is something that changed throughout the years now this one I like to call it Frankenstein because goddamn this one has gone through so much shit Oh my God, when I found this one, it was beat to shit. It was basically falling apart. There was holes in it. There was uh, deteriorating wood. The back was cracking in half. It didn't have a diapason. Basically falling apart. I refretted it. I got it back to where it needed to be. It has a mica now. The potential that it had made me want to buy it. I want to say that it's like a one and a half. Roberto Morales was actually making these back in the day. So he had his hand in the construction. The tag did fall off. Uh, and basically, uh, everything about it screams that it's kind of old. It has a very nice, warm town, uh, sound. has a very powerful sound sometimes when you play these very old instruments you can kind of feel like just how they kind of sounded back then either it's the, the the age of the wood or it's just a construction you know a lot of people seek out the instrument just because it's so old um but old doesn't always mean better so for me it's always about playing it seeing if you like it and then from there you know make your decision It's just gone through so much shit. Falling apart at one point. And it's alive again. So. Great. This other Bihuela that I have. This is a Roberto Morales. This one looks a little bit more. Uh, I guess you could say modern. I want to say this one's early 2000s. If you look at later years. It kind of started getting this very standard kind of design. This one had two huge holes in it. At, at one point. Uh, someone had dug into it with a guitar pick and it was not in great conditions i got it refinished uh, it looks basically brand new up until this point this one's very pretty because of the back the back has this real nice neat line right through the middle and that's something that wasn't there on, on all vihuelas i've seen two maybe three roberto morales that have this line running through the back so it's really cool and this one has a real natural finish if you look at the back the neck everything is all the same color i compare them based off of you know what i've seen in the past sometimes they dated them or they didn't I guess it just depended if they had a pen that day, but not all of them are dated. It has a fresh coat of varnish, a uh, very thin varnish, but it was just recently redone. So it kind of sounds a little new to me and I'm the worst. I hate breaking in vihuelas. I guess that's just my thing. <laughs> I'm saying it just kind of has this very warm town like tone w warm i cannot talk warm tone but it's very clean and for me it's more about feel for me this one just feels great i love that because the sound will always come with the strings or with continued use but for me it's about the feel just how it feels in your hand boom you play it instant response so i like that The 
size two. It's beautiful. It's really, it really is. This one's gonna, this one's gonna be staying around for a little bit for me. Um, I'm gonna be playing it as much as I can. This vihuela, right here, uh, is really the one I've been playing with the most in the past year and a half, maybe. This one is a size one, as you can tell. It is very small. You can tell by its red color that it's a very deep red, almost wine color. That's what really attracted me to this vihuela. Whoa, attract. Kind of sus. <laughs> anyway, love the way that it looks, the way it shines off, especially if you're playing like a gig outside. Mm, it just lights up a very nice, pretty color. Um, it's a little bit different. I kind of uh, embraced this uh, design. Uh, upgraded the tuners uh, so you can see they're a little gold. I've used it so much for working. Uh, you can tell this is the one that I work with the most. You can see the wear from my, my wedding ring here in the back. Since it is a size one, it has a very punchy sound, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to combine uh, kind of with that sound from, from a guitar. Can we play, uh, let's play La Viquina. have a bigger vihuela especially for me i got short arms bro so you know i don't have much range so honestly using a size one for me feels great uh, a size three i've had size three vihuelas they feel a little bit bigger a little bit bulkier that's going to be a problem for me especially if we're playing nine ten hours or something like that after a while you know i'm sorry but i start to get a little tired so the action on this one and the size on this one um really really feels great because it starts feeling you know comfortably i can work comfortably and really that's what you want in an instrument these vihuelas are really great this vihuela has been very good to me i've loved it a lot um it just has a very clean clean sound and i love that about it ruben morales it it is very big or it, not very big it's a size two it's just thick you know it's just a little bit bigger than than the one that i just played right now it's this weddle color very yellow i've never been a real fan of this color but the the overall the vihuela is super nice it's got this nice rayleta design has this nice little concha inlay right here in the middle the thing about this one is i can't find the string set to match that'll really you know make sound make this one sound great i did for a little bit but they were a little too thin so i was making a buzz sound and the last thing you want as a vihuela player is for your vihuela to sound like it's buzzing all the time and i didn't like that if i have to i will sell it but at the same time i'm like it's so pretty though you know ruben morales is usually have a i want to say a thicker sound this one is from 2008 it has a very nice sound for if you're by yourself and sometimes we have those gigs you know we're just a vihuela player by yourself it's a, it's a little bit bigger but like i said there's nothing you can't get used to if i can play it you're good gotten rid of a lot of vihuelas for thinking that it wasn't good and most likely i was just playing the wrong strings a lot of these strings that you put on these vihuelas are going to dictate how it feels and how it sounds so you want to play around with a lot of these sets and kind of see what is going to be the best for this vihuela one i'm gonna talk about is this right here this is another ruben morales uh from the same year surprisingly this one's from 2008 uh, i actually got this one from a friend pepe uh who plays uh, in sol de mexico got this one from him this is the vihuela i kind of started playing in high school uh, uh all throughout high school i played this one at every competition that we ever went to i wasn't singing and pepe was so he'd go up to sing and i just kind of played vihuela i didn't have a vihuela uh, so he let me borrow this one. So then I eventually hit him up for it, you know, after after high school and he he graciously sold it to me and I've had it ever since. It was my favorite for a very long time. It doesn't get played as much, but it's always there. This Ruben has been through a lot with me um, in my years at Texas State and my years, you know, here in Fort Worth. This one 
just had that sound that really carried my my sound. It cultivated my sound for a very long time while I was in college and when I was in high school. Uh, if it wasn't for this vihuela, I really would, wouldn't be where I, where I am now. I've played it for a very long time. I played it all in high school and college and even now, you know, so this one has been through a lot with me. So anyway, guys, uh, that is a quick rundown on all the vihuelas that I have right now. I think any musician should have more than one instrument just to kind of, I feel like sometimes I'm like, I don't feel like playing this one and I'll play another one. I'll play this one and then next week I'll play this one. You always have your favorites. I like to keep those and then eventually you sell off the ones that, you know, might become someone else's favorite. A lot of these instruments, you know, you find them used and they've been loved and they've been played for such a long time. By the time it gets to you, you know, you might be its second, third, fourth, fifth owner, you know. So wow. take care of your instruments. Uh, look out for all the Morales uh, vihuelas uh, if they're not too expensive. It's a great instrument. It's a great line of instruments. That's why they're the best in the world. If you like this kind of content, we actually have a podcast, me and my friend Victor, which we do. It's called Charro Beans Podcast. It is a mariachi podcast where we talk about gigging and mariachi and what it's like to be in that mariachi life. So if you like this kind of stuff, check us out. Give us a like. Give us a rating. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. And I guess that's it. <laughs> I think that's it.